You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key. Jesus is one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key, Jesus, is one that has that master key. You are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that key. His master key, Jesus, is one that has that master key. You are Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. It is great to be with us this um, wonderful Saturday, being the first Saturday of the month of December. I want to appreciate all of us that have been here uh, or trying to. Uh, get across through logistics to get down to us here. We want to thank all of us that are uh, with us this evening. We want to appreciate you all for your followership. Those of us that were here on the program yesterday, I want to thank you for joining us and being a part of the uh, teachings that we have been passing across. Yesterday was a very wonderful time, uh, a praise festival, just to bless the Lord and thank him for all that he has done for us uh, over the entire year. One day is not enough. <laughs> if he's talking about generally speaking, to thank God for what he has done. The Lord has done great things for us. We are in, we are glad. The Bible says, um, it said, uh, fear not, O land, for the Lord has done great things. I want us to uh, we'll keep that attitude. That attitude is very, very important to what the Lord intends to do with us uh, going forward in the remaining part of this year. I want us to know that wherever God starts, he always wants to finish it. Remember, he's the Alpha and he's the Omega. He's the beginning and he's the end. He's the A and the Z. He's the, he's the, he's the first and the last. So there's no way you are going to do anything that will surpass God's record. And that is why we are here to give thanks to God for what he's done. We did that yesterday. And I want us to keep that, uh, that spirit. It is very, very essential for the perfecting of the things that God has begun. And we've been talking about uh, 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 the, the mysteries of this 12 month uh with every one of us uh on this platform and we'll just go further on those things which the lord has done uh i want to welcome all of us that are watching tonight 
uh, from Man Matthews to Brio to Mama Jackie to Charles Steta from Dallas. Thank you very much for joining tonight. I want to appreciate all of us for being with us tonight. I've been talking about the mystery of the 12 months, the things that uh, God has ordained to do in the 12 months. And this 12 months will be a month of completion and the month of settlement, among many things uh, regarding the month. A month to complete what God has begun. God has started wonderful things in the year and he said to complete them if we give him a chance to do it. So we have to be ready to give God a chance to complete what he has begun. But I've learned that what it takes for God to start a thing is not what it takes for God to finish it. When God starts something, what is required for us to do, for God to do something, it is not the same thing it takes for God to finish it. Different things at different time. And that is why we are coming your way to minister in this area. And I quite believe that with understanding, we'll be able to break into the agenda and the purpose of God. And that is why I believe that tonight, as we have gathered here to be able to uh, 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 connect with this understanding, the Lord will begin to complete the things he has begun in our various lives in the name of Jesus Christ. And we've been talking about the fact that the captain of this 12 month is, is called Eldai, 1 Chronicles 27 verse 15, Eldai. It means a man that was delivered from captivity, a man that is snatched out of captivity. So the month of December, among other things, is a month of freedom from captivity. And you see, when you begin to work with what is available in a month, that helps you to know what to expect. He said, the man here, we are talking about First Chronicles 15, 27 verse 15. Eldai was one of the captive that was taken to Babylon and was delivered from that captivity. And on his return, he became one of the mighty warriors of David. It means that that captivity was not the end of his life. That captivity was not the end of his story. And that is what I want us to know. This month is a month of freedom. And freedom from what? Freedom from captivity. These are the things to expect in this 12 months. So if you are under any form of captivity, I stand with you by faith that what heaven has ordained for these 12 months, which is meant to be free from captivity, I pray that this month will be the month of freedom for you. These are things to expect this month. I, from any captivity, mental captivity, marital captivity, health captivity, financial captivity, from all kinds of captivity, I believe that the Lord that put Eldai as the captain of this month, the way he was delivered out of captivity is the same way you are going to be delivered after captivity. In fact, I saw that Eldai did not only, wasn't just delivered from captivity, he went to become an instrument in the building of the temple. Zechariah chapter six. Zechariah chapter six. <clears throat> we saw Eldai here. Zechariah chapter six. Zechariah six. Uh, we saw here, Zechariah chapter six. The Bible says from verse nine, the word of the Lord came to me saying, 
receive the gift from the captives. Eldai, Tobijah, Jedida, who came from Babylon and go the same day and time to the house of Josiah, the son of Sephaniah, take the silver and the gold that have been collected from them and make an elaborate, an elaborate crown and set on the head of Joshua, the son of Zadok. And they speak to him, what are we saying here? He came back from captivity. Not only was he back from captivity, he came back with substance from captivity. He did not come back empty and dead from captivity. And that is why I say to you, every one of us in this 12 month, get ready. You will not finish your journey this month in any form of captivity. The Lord will send you assistance. The Lord will give you help. And that is the captain for the month, the 12th month of this year. He came out of captivity. He was released out of captivity. I see you also coming out of this kind of captivity that the enemy may have put you into in any form in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to let you know, even if your case is a function of collective captivity that we saw in that family, that family that was there in Matthew 22 that married seven, that a woman married seven brothers and all of them died the same way. You call that collective captivity. Even with that, even if that's the case, that's where you find yourself. I pray for you in a similar way. You are going to come out of it in this month of freedom, which is the 12th month. Let's pray. Father, thank you for everyone that's watching because your word shall become real in their life. Your word shall become a reality in their affairs. In the name of Jesus Christ, everyone watching today, they will not finish this month in captivity. They will finish this month in freedom. In the name of Jesus Christ, everyone that is watching here today will experience a right way through in the name of Jesus Christ. I call this done in the life of everyone here in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want us to know that every one of us that is here, that God has an, an agenda and a plan for us uh, for this month. And I know that agenda will not wither off in Jesus' name. And we saw here uh, one man that, was, that came out of that captivity, that was snatched out of captivity, was the man we call Joachim Jeremiah 52 verse 31, which I share with us. Uh, it was another man that was delivered from captivity of 37 years. You have to give us a track record of people that came out of captivity. What were the things, what time were they out? It was also in the 12th month. That was when they came out of captivity. We saw that in Jeremiah chapter 53, verse 31, that this man was in captivity for 37 years. That's Jeremiah 52, verse 31. He came out of this captivity after 37 years. It was in the 12th month that he came out of captivity. So the 12th month is synonymous with the month people come out of captivity. We saw that in with King Joachim. He was released from the prison. We are told he came to pass that seven years of captivity that in the 12th month, Evu Merodach, the king of Babylon, in his first year of his reign, lifted up the head of this man and brought him out of prison. So we saw that it is also a time that somebody of 37 year captivity was brought out. So no matter how long any captivity you might find yourself in, I believe and I have faith with you today that you will come out of that captivity in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I pray for you that you will come out of this captivity. But what is it actually that led to that captivity? I will come into that, which is very, very important that we take note of. If you notice, the captivity, the plan to put the children of Israel into captivity, in Esther chapter 9 verse 1, it was also in the 12th month that the Lord delivered them and preserved them. So the 12th month, the mystery of the 12th month has a lot of things that we can leverage on. So this month is not a month you throw in the towel and say, well, uh, the pandemic has come, COVID has messed up the whole thing. Nobody can do anything this month. This year, many people have died. Many people have lost their, their, their livelihood. There's nothing I can do. I want to encourage you, don't throw in the towel yet for this, for, for, for this year. Don't say everything I want to do now with you next year. No, God still wants to do some things this year if you have understanding and know how to assess them. It was in that same 12th month that the Lord brought the children of Israel out of the captivity that the enemy planned for them. Either the captivity the enemy planned or the one that you're already in is all going to be the same. In the 12th month, God will bring you out of planned captivity. And not only that, the one if you're already in one, is said to bring you out in the name of Jesus Christ. But what is it that this man did not understand? Joachim, we notice that Joachim did not walk in the ways of the Lord. He turned his back at God, and God turned his back at him. And that's how he ended in captivity. In other words, if you don't want to finish your journey in captivity, you have to keep a strong relationship with God. And that is the point I want to share with us very, very briefly today. I'm not going to take your time. Just for us to be able to uh, connect with the purpose of God for this month. Now, I will say that from the, uh, 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 from the book of John, I wanted to know when it comes to uh, the miracles that we have declared, we have told us of things that the month of December is. I have told you that in the month of December, uh, God has ordained or the last month of this year to crown the year with his goodness is a month of free it's a month of freedom from captivity it's also the month of settlement I have told you also is a month that heaven has ordained that better is the end of the matter from the beginning that this year will end better for you than your beginning these are promises of what God is said to do in the month of of December now looking at it, after all these things are said and done, what are the things you must do if you want to assess all these things? All this prophetic blessing of the 12th month, the answer to one single thing, and that is to dedication. And look at it here. These are different miracles of the month of December. But if you look at the book of John chapter six, John chapter six, this is very going to be a very brief one today. John 6, John 6 from verse 6. We saw Jesus here and the disciples and the multitude. They have eaten bread and they were full. They were chasing Jesus for bread. They are chasing him for the miracles. And see what happened here in John chapter 6, verse 66. The Bible says that, and it said, Therefore I say unto you, uh, no one came to me, except is granted to him by my father. And in verse 12, we are told from that time, many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him. Many went back, when started teaching on certain things. Then verse 7, Jesus said to the 12, do you want to go away too? And Simon said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And also, we have come to believe and know that you are Christ, the son of the living God. Now, the point I want to bring out here is that Jesus was dealing with two kinds of people. The multitude, when they begin to hear Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. Except a man eat of me and drink of me, you have no life. And they said, wow, what kind of teaching is this one? And they all went away. 
And after they have gotten their miracles, after they have eaten bread and they are full, they went away. So, but Jesus turned to the 12. Why am I talking about this? Because I want to pick the word 12. He turned to the 12 and said, are you also going away like the other ones? Will you also go away like them? And they said, no, we will not go away from you. You are our bus stop. We will not go away from you. You are our source. We will not go away from you. You are our God. And they held on to Jesus in relationship. What am I saying here is if you are going to gain access to all this prophetic word we have spoken about these 12 months, have been the year of completion, the time of crowning the year with goodness, and you finish the year better than the beginning, freedom from captivity, they it boiled down to one single key, and that is commitment to God and dedication. Commitment to the source of miracles, not just the channels of miracles. Miracles can come and go, but we must remain connected to the source. What are we saying, therefore? If the realm will seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all this other thing shall be added unto you. There are people that are running after miracles, and they forgo the God of that miracle. There are people that are seeking the miracles, but they are forgotten that there is a God behind the miracles. Just like Jesus was telling them at one time in that same chapter, he said to them uh, in John chapter six, in John chapter six, after they have eaten the bread and they were chasing after Jesus, Jesus said to them, I know, he said, he said to them in verse 26, he said, he said to them, most assuredly I say to you, seek not. He said, I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw signs, because you ate loaves and you are filled. You are seeking me. It's not because you saw signs. It's because of what you could get. You were telling them, it's better to seek the God of miracles and tie yourself to him than seeking miracles. That is, it was saying to them, it's better you tie yourself to the source, tie yourself to God of the miracles, which is the source, than just chasing the channel of miracles. And that is what he's saying here. Some people, after they have seen uh, the, 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 the things that they are looking for, they walk away. But Jesus turned to the twelve. Is are you also like the disciples? Are you like them? Or you two want to walk away? And they said, no, sir. We're not going to walk away. You are the son of God. We know you are the source. So the key to lasting miracles, the key to move into the fulfillment of the thing God has spoken is for me and you not to well, for me and you to seek the source of the miracles that we are seeking, which is God. Many people seek after miracle, but they neglect relationship with the God of that miracle. Now, and as every prophecy you have received at the beginning, and we have been saying to you, is at the mercy of your dedication and commitment to God. The Lord is going to crown the year with his goodness, yes. But hear me very well, you must learn the secret of dedicating yourself and commitment to God, not the miracles. If you will hold on to God and you dedicate yourself to God, miracles will become a natural occurrence in your life. But hear me very well, uh, miracles can come and go. But when you are connected to the God of that miracle, you never lack miracles in your life. It is seeking the God of miracles that keep you in the flow. God is, that's what he said, let's tie ourselves to God, which is the engine behind the miracles. 
seek God as a person. Now, start running after God, the God who is the source of the miracles. Start running after Jesus, the son of the living God. They said here, uh, 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 they said here uh, uh, to him, they said, Jesus, they said, the disciples said, said, to whom shall we go to? Those other guys can walk away because they lack understanding. This was separate disciples from multitude. Disciples, hold on to the God of miracles. Multitude, see miracles. When they get it, they go away. Now, let me say this to you. They ate fish and bread. That is the end. After that, that bread and fish will finish one day. But why not tie yourself to the source of the miracles than the miracle itself and see what happened to the disciples? Even though the people that are talking, Peter himself was a man that have experienced miracles. You know, Peter was a man that he, he, he couldn't catch a fish. And Jesus stepped in and gave him a miracle and assisted him. And he had such a very large breakthrough in his business because he gave attention to God and see what happened to him as a result. We saw that he became a very, he has seen miracles before. So Jesus was just telling him, look, if he understood what it means to see miracles, he understood it. And he was saying to him that, look, if you will stick to me after that miracle. So they have seen miracles in their life. So that they have not seen miracles. But Jesus was saying there is more to it. Connect yourself to the God of miracles. Be committed. Be more dedicated to God. Now, why are we saying that? Is this. That if you look at the 12 disciples, you will discover that because they were connected to the source, which is Jesus Christ, they ended with more miracles than those that left. Now, see what happened here. I said, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And as a result, they said here to him, Jesus, he said, you, we also have come to believe and know that you are the son of God. We have come to know you beyond just miracles. We have come to know you. He said, you are, you, he said to him, shall we go? You are the words of eternal life. Not only that, you have also come to believe and know that you are Christ, the son of the living God. We have gotten the understanding that you are Christ, the son of the living God. We have come to know you on a more intimate level, not just because we saw miracles. We have come to know your person more than just the product. My, my focus here tonight is to help us to find, to know the person of Jesus Christ, the source of all miracles, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one that is seated, that are ruling the affairs of men, to know him more personally. That is what our goal should be. No matter what your state is, uh, uh, you will discover that no matter what miracle you see, you will, uh, you will always need anything you get from God. You will always need anything you get from God. So if, you, if God gave you a miracle of bread and loaves, you will need that miracle again. And that is why you need source. You need to connect yourself to the source of miracles, which is Jesus himself. When you have him, you can never lack miracles in your life. And that is the point I want to tell us today. See what became of the disciples. Those disciples, the 12, other people walked away, but they stayed on. They stay committed. They stay dedicated. What about if the miracle stop? Hold on to God. And that is the point I want to make to all of us here. Look at the disciples, what they became. Today, many people, those people that were, that were multitude, they've gone. 
they've eaten the bread and they have gone. The bread and fish has finished and nobody hear about them again today. But look at the disciples. We are still hearing about them today. We are talking about Peter today. We are talking about James today. Because they held on to Jesus, the source of miracles. They had more miracles, even though they are dead, they are still living. Those people that ate bread and went away, do you know any of their name? Do you remember any name that they have? Nobody even know them today. But look at the 12 that stick on to Jesus. Today, we are talking about them. What are we saying is this, that the disciples, they focus on the source. They focus on the source. Why multitude, they focus on channels. I want to encourage you because a time may come where what you are believing God for, you don't even see it yet. Let Jesus become your bus stop. Let God know that I don't have any other, other alternative. You are the only God I have. You are my only source. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to hold on to you. Even if you do, even if you don't, even if there's no miracle, I hold on to you because you are the miracle worker. <laughs> if there is no other way, I know you are a miracle worker, you are a way maker, I'm going to hold on to you. And that is what I want all of us to give attention to. Let Jesus know that you're my bus stop. I am not going anywhere. I am going to hold on to you. No matter what it is, I'm going to hold on to you. You know why I'm saying so? Don't look for shortcut because shortcut can cut away your life. Don't look for shortcut. If what you are asking God for has not reached your hand, don't go away. Stay with God. Don't go away from him. Don't say, I have waited for this long. I have waited, I prayed and prayed and prayed. I didn't get what I'm looking for. I'm going away. If you do that, you have just thrown away your destiny. Because God is your source. That if let me say something to you. Anything that God cannot do for you, no man can try it. Anything that God say I cannot do, no man can say I try. Somebody said, if it's not from God, I don't want it. If it's not from God, don't seek alternative. Don't seek. Don't seek to do. There was a, there was, there was a, uh, 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 that was what that woman, <laughs> the man, the woman, uh, in Matthew chapter 15, that what the woman did. Jesus said, woman, you know, I am not sent to you. The very good example, Matthew 15. I'll begin to round up right now. Matthew 15. The woman of Canaanite, she came with her daughter that was vest with devils. And Jesus said, you are a Canaanite. I'm very sorry. I'm only sent to the Jews. He says, sir, because healing is children's bread from Matthew 15, verse 21. Behold, the woman cried to him, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. And Jesus did not answer a word. Understand that. Verse 23, maybe your case, you are crying, you are crying. So I see you are not you are not getting a word, you are not getting any answer. Please, let's do what this woman did. Let's learn from this woman what she did. The woman, see what she did. Uh, <laughs> the woman, Bible says that the disciples came and hugged him, saying, "Send her away." Uh, <clears throat> he said, send her away, she cried after us. And he answered. He said, I'm not sent, but to the Lordship of Israel. He said, I'm not sent. Jesus said to her, 
I was not sent except to the Lordship of Israel. Then the woman came and worshiped him and said, Lord, help me. The woman may say, I walk away. She said, Jesus, you are my last bus stop. I don't have another place to go. I don't have alternative. You are the only God I have. And the woman held on to Jesus. And because she held on, even though they said healing is for children, it's not for dogs. Literally, they have been told that she's a dog. The woman said, you can call me anything you want to call me. I am not going, Jesus. I am going to stay here with you. I will hold on to you. And because of that woman's tenacious hold, commitment, dedication of saying, I'm not going anywhere, Jesus, you are the one that will help me out. What happened? Jesus said to her, Jesus answered and said, oh woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that hour. What am I saying to you here? Yeah, sometimes you cry, you pray, you fast. It's as if there's no answer. Please stay on. Hold on to God. He said, they that trust him will not be put to shame. Hold on. Don't walk away. I was told of a woman that uh, uh, Pastor Adeboye of Redeemed Christian Church of God and the wife was praying for, believing God for children. They were praying for, I forgot to visit her. And after some time, she felt that the thing was being delayed. Baby is not coming. She was not pregnant. She was getting impatient. And she walked away to go and look for alternative. She went to meet an herbalist. People that do, that worship after other gods. And yes, she went to them and they gave her some things and she became pregnant. As at the time that this testimony was being shared, she became pregnant, but she couldn't deliver that child. That child pregnancy went more than one year, kept on there. As at the time that we are talking about this testimony, that woman remained pregnant. She can't deliver the child. Because she couldn't wait for God, she wanted to get it at all costs. I want to encourage everybody that is listening to me right now that what you are looking for, God has it only if you can hold on to him. And there are things that people do when they are facing delay. Don't go look for alternative. If God cannot do it, you better wait for him. And that's why Job said in Job 14, 14, he said, all my appointed days will I wait until my change come. All my appointed days will I, I will wait. I will wait. You can't wait forever. With your eyes on him, day and night, one day will show up for you. He said, all my appointed days will I wait till my change come. I want to say to you, please wait for God. He said, they that wait upon him shall renew their strength. You cannot, you see, people may mock you. They may say all the time, you don't know another thing more than church, Bible, praying, fasting. Yes, we may do all those things to you. But let me tell you, let people mock you. Let them mock you for waiting for God. If people mock you, let them mock you. When they mock you, God will make you. If you will let, don't, oh, don't let anybody drive you towards outside God. Hold on to him. There's a reward. There's a payday for those that have learned how to wait for God. And that is what I want to say to you. There is a payday for those that learn how to wait for God. If God cannot do what you are looking for, nobody can do it. <laughs> I want to let you know there is a miracle that is coming your way, but you believe God for it. Whatever, no matter what you are looking for, God has it. God has it. Job 23, verse 14. So I round up. 
Job 23, verse 14. It's better to wait for God than to look for alternative. It's better to wait for God than to look for alternative. Now, Job 23, verse 14, he said, he perform what is appointed for me and many of such things are with him. He performs what is appointed for me and many of such things are with him. Everything you are looking for is with him. <laughs> That's the point I want to make for you. Everything you are looking for, is it child, is it freedom, is it intervention? They are with him. They are with him. There's nothing you are looking for that is not with him. He said many of such things are with him. That is uh, Job 23, Job 23, verse 14. He performs, <laughs> he performs everything that is appointed unto me. That is, there are things that belong to you that is with him. The Bible says, for he perform what is appointed for me, and many of such things are with him. And another one says, he performs what is appointed for me, many of such things are with him. No, no matter what you are looking for, God has them with him. Is he a child? He has them with him. Is he a baby? He has them. There's nothing you are looking for that God does not have with him. There's nothing you are looking for that God does not have with him. English Standard Version said, for he will complete what he appoints for me. Many such things are in his mind. Again, he will complete what he appoints for me. Many such things are in his mind. There are things that are in God's mind for you. Many of those things are with him. Many of such things are with him. Another one say, New Living Translation said, it will do for me what he has planned. It controls my destiny. I like that. Another one say, it will do for me what he has planned. It controls my destiny. So no matter what you are looking for, God has them with him. That is why you should be encouraged to stay on, don't give up. Winners, quitters, don't win. Quitters don't win and winners don't quit. It's just like the, uh, the, the 11 hour miracle believers, they stay on. People may mock you for staying on because delay, reproach, all those things like the way Anna had to wait. But I've discovered something. Like I've always said, God may not come at your time, but you will never be late. Not only that, every delayed miracle, they come out as special miracles. Every delayed miracles always come out as special miracles. Now, Christian stand up and say, he will certainly accomplish what he has decreed for me. He has many more things like this in his mind. God has many glorious things for you in his mind. I want to encourage you, don't give up. Don't give up. Hold on to the end. That is what they call faith. And as you do so, the Lord be with you. I want you to focus on the source. Don't focus on the channel. The channel can change, but the source remains the same. The Bible says, 
the Lord knows those that are his is a stronghold in time of trouble. Hold him in time of trouble. Let him know, Lord, I put my trust in you. That was what Job did. He said, even though he slay me, I will trust him. Even though I don't understand what is going on, Lord, I put my trust in you. People like that, they will always end up at the end as a winner. I want to stop here today. I want to appreciate all of us. I want to pray with you to encourage you, don't give up. Not only don't give up, turn your eyes on the source, Jesus. Turn your eyes on the source, Jesus. There is a songwriter that says, I turn my eyes unto Jesus. <laughs> turn your eyes unto Jesus. Look to his wonderful face. Talking about turn your eyes unto Jesus. Look unto his wonderful face. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. He said this on this way. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of the earth we grow faintly dim in the light of this glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. All the things of this earth we grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I want to appreciate all of us for joining us tonight. Thank you for being a part of this broadcast. Uh, uh, the Lord bless you. Have a very wonderful uh, remaining part of the day. I pray that the Lord will be with you. The Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will come true for you. He will not allow those that seek him to see shame. I want to encourage you the year is not yet ended. Don't throw in the tower. God can still do a miracle for you. But hold on to the source. Even if you don't see anything, just keep doing the right thing. Keep trusting him. Anybody can uh, stay when they are getting something. But it's disciples that stay. People walk away when they are looking for them, they don't find it. In the journey of life, because they are praying, they didn't get answer, they walk away. But not the disciples. Jesus said to the disciples, will you also walk away like other people? He said, Master, to where shall we go? They are more than they can go away. We cannot go anywhere. You are the source. You are the source. You are the main deal. You are the real deal. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to hold on to you and see what they became. See Peter today. It's those that hold on. They are the one that becomes something. Anybody can walk away. I've seen a lot of that. Anybody can walk away. They don't get what they're looking for. Even Jesus, the disciples left him. The more to left, only were remaining 12. Think about that. It were remaining 12. And then the 12, will you also walk away like others? He said, uh, they can walk away. We are not walking away. We understand better than that. And see what they became today. They became apostles. See what they became today. They became the 12 pillars in heaven. Today, Every Sunday, we are still hearing about those guys, those 12 guys that waited behind. Peter, James, John. We are still reading about Peter today, reading about John today, reading about Andrew today. You know why? Because they stayed on when others left. They helped, not only did they stay on, they stay on to the end, holding on to Jesus. They die for the cause of Jesus but they are still living today. Go to church tomorrow. Where are they going to read from? No pastor will preach without talking about New Testament. You quote Peter, or you quote Paul, or you quote Andrew, you quote all these disciples. They held on when others walked away. Others have gotten the miracle. If it's a car, it has been spoiled by now. If it's food, you are throwing it out of your body. 
But those guys held on to the source. They became the main deal today. Hold on to Jesus. Anybody can walk away when they don't get what they are looking for. When you hold on to Jesus, it's a matter of time will come through for you. Thank you very much. I want to see you tomorrow. Let's make it uh, as we come on live tomorrow by 11 in the 11 30 in the morning. You can join us on Zoom. Do that 11 30, 10 30. And the evening US church service, uh, seven on Zoom, eight on Facebook, as will be telling us about what are the instruments you will engage to for God to perfect the things He has begun in your life. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate you all. Have a very wonderful evening. Let's pray. Father, thank you for everybody that's watching tonight. Glorify you for their lives. Thank you for giving them grace to stay on. Grace to stay on to God. Grace to refocus on the source. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight. Um, from uh, uh, Charles Theta from Dallas, thank you. Tony Tari, thank you very much. Minister Celia, thank you. Uh, Minister Celia, uh, Mama BC, thank you very much. My Jackie, uh, I want to thank all of you. Terry Tia, thank you. Mama Claudette, Mudukpe, thank you very much. Brother Emmanuel, Terry Chagi, thank you. And Matthews, thank you very much. All of you that are here, Minister Wonder, thank you. I appreciate all of you, Mama Jackie. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much. We appreciate you all. Have a very wonderful evening. God bless you all. Bye bye. In a favor today that will last you a lifetime, you must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that.